Welcome to day two of To Kill a Mockingbird, Analyzing, Interpreting Text, Chapter 15. From part one, you were asked to look at Atticus's character in this scene. You were able to underline all of the clues that helped show Atticus's emotions. Now, it's easy to just glance by all of those descriptions and just think, oh, he's doing something. But when actually we are able to interpret a whole lot more about his character because of that. So again, we don't only want to look for what the author tells us. We want to look at what the author shows us for a deeper meaning in the text. So hopefully you guys have already discussed the different places and clues that you found that show Atticus's different emotions when he was calm, when he was nervous, when he was stubborn, amazed, and then relieved at the end. Hopefully you also discuss your writing. So I asked you to take a look at that and talk about what kind of person is Atticus or what kind of father is Atticus. Either way, I'm pretty sure that you came to the conclusion that he's a good person and a good father. When he was standing up in front of the mob, he did not care about personally being hurt or personally being harmed or being in trouble for himself, but he did care about Tom Robinson and he did care about his children. He was not nervous until he realized that Jem, Scout, and Dill could be affected by the mob. But thankfully, the mob left and Atticus was relieved, not for himself, but because of everyone else in the scene. So this shows that Atticus cares more about others than he does himself, making him a good person and a good father. But today, we are going to look at part two of this worksheet, and we're gonna try and answer the question, why does the mob leave? So we're gonna use the same packet that we used yesterday, our copies of chapter 15, and we're going to try and answer these questions by filling out the chart. So in the chart, I have one, two, three, four quotes from Scout. I would like you to find those quotes in chapter 15, and I would like you to write down how does Mr. Cunningham or the mob react. So if there's a quote, if there's a description, I want to know what happens. Then, I would like you to take that show and turn it into a tell. So, this is what they are doing. Now I want you to say what are they thinking and why would they act that way. Remember, when we go from a show to a tell, we are interpreting a text. So the first quote is, hey Mr. Cunningham, how's your entailment getting along? So let's see if we can find that in chapter 15. Here we go. Hey, Mr. Cunningham, how is your entailment getting along? Mr. Walter Cunningham's legal affairs were well known to me. Atticus once described them at length. The big man blinked and hooked his thumbs in his overall straps. He seemed uncomfortable. He cleared his throat and looked away. My friendly overture had fallen flat. Mr. Cunningham wore no hat and the top of his forehead was white in contrast to his sun-scorched face, which led me to believe he wore one most days. He shifted his feet, clad in heavy work shoes. So in our box, we can say, so how does Cunningham react? Well, he blinks, he hooks his thumb in his overalls, he seems uncomfortable, clears his throat and looks away, and shifts in his feet. So that's what he does. Now, why do you think that he would react this way? Well, maybe he's uncomfortable because he's getting called out for being an individual in this group. Maybe he doesn't really want to talk to Scout because of, you know, what he's there to do. Maybe he feels a little awkward about having so much personal attention. Who knows? Now, you're going to do that same thing for these other three quotes. 
Now notice this one has an ellipsis because the ending is really here. There's stuff in the middle that I cut out. The ending is here, and I want the reaction after Scout says entailments are bad. So there's one, two, three quotes. So what are they doing? What's their reaction? And then next to it, what would they think and why would they react that way? When you are done with that, in the white space at the bottom, try and answer this question. Why does the mob leave? So after looking at all of their actions, reactions, and your interpretations of them, try and come up with, why does the mob leave? Now, when you're done with that, I would like you to have a discussion. You should compare the charts. You should make sure that everything's going well. And then I want you to share the reading, first with a partner, so that everyone gets a chance to share, and then as a whole group, so that everyone gets to hear everyone's opinions about why the mob left. And why was it a little girl named Scout who accidentally, without knowing, stopped a lynching? When that is all set and ready to go, your homework tonight will be to study for your quiz on chapters 15, 16, and 17 the following day. Have a good time.